Hi friends, welcome back. Today I want to do a quick sharing video on some of my favorite um, tools because I thought I would go over a few things that I feel like are fairly essential or at least useful in the studio and workshop because it's so close to Christmas and Santa might be looking for little things to stuff into your stockings. Some of these are perfect for that. So let's begin. So what can you guess is my all time favorite you can't live without it tool. If you guessed a craft knife, you would be correct. And I have a couple of different kind. And so this is the one that you see me use most of the time. And here's another version, same idea, exact same blade, different shank with a rubbery, grippier grip. Um, and then this style, which is a utility knife, and I use that for cutting heavier things um, or things that I'm cutting with more force. But typically, this is a knife you see me use. And you've seen me do things like score with it. So I'm going to put this in here. With that knife comes a ruler, and this happens to be one of my favorites. It's a metal ruler um, that I've had for a lifetime or more. And uh, I, I think it's essential that you have a metal ruler. So basically, when I'm not using the knife to cut things, I am using it for scoring. And I just use the back of the blade and just run it lightly along the piece that I'm using. And that just helps me get a much cleaner fold. No breaking, it's not wobbly. And while we're here on a fold, let's talk bone folders. Because this is a new fold, it should be burnished. So I've got several bone folders. This is a traditional one made out of whatever it was they made them out of when it was no longer bone. I don't think this is bone. It's hard though. This is not going to break. Um, it cleans up with acetone. I can just wipe it and I get glue all over and paint and everything. I just wipe it occasionally with acetone. If you're using a synthetic newer bone folder that you might have bought online, um, I would not suggest the acetone. It will eat into plastics. So anyway, so now you see knife, ruler, bone folder. If you have those things, you can make a book or a card <laughs> at least. All right, so there's those. And while we have a ruler here, let me grab two other rulers I also like. One of them is a centering ruler. I'm sorry that the light is so funky and you're going to get a lot of reflection on this. But basically, a centering ruler just has a zero in the center and then it measures out from both sides. So rather than putting this here and saying, oh, okay, well, it's, it's four and something, um, and then dividing that in two, you can just use the centering part and say, okay, if I line the edges with the same measurement mark on each side, it'll show me the center. So in this case, I'm going two and a half, two and a half, that's the line that I'm on. So here is my center. So I find that really handy. So let me show that again up here because I know that you can't see it. So you see if I line it up and just basically center it with eyes saying, oh, okay, I'm two and a half on this edge and two and a half on this edge, there's the center right there. Very, very handy. Similarly, um, this ruler, a T-square, is also handy. And I used to use, I have several metal ones of these, I used to use them frequently. So you can see this edge is not straight, so I wanna trim it. So I, all you have to do is line up your piece so that you can do a perfectly perpendicular trim. So now you can see this is square. Uh, I can take my handy knife and cut. Now the one thing about this plastic ruler is it is plastic. So you can dig into it and, and kind of nick the plastic and get caught up. So it's not good. So you want to take your time and be aware of that, that you don't want to cut into it because it will stop your blade. Whereas a metal one, um, that's not going to happen. So just remember that because this is handy for these kinds of things, but there is that little caveat. And what I like about the clear ones, the plastic one, is that you can see through it. So you can work differently with your project and, and measure differently because you can see through it. So that's a bonus. Um, but do be careful using a knife. And certainly if you're just using it to, to mark a line, like if you wanted to mark a line, you would find a pencil, and then you could just draw a line. And you'd know that it was perpendicular to this edge. Very handy. All right. So then, what else do I use all the time? I use glue. 
and this is my favorite family of glue, the Faber whatever, um, Faber Tac, Faber Fix. I bet the Beacon Three in One is probably the same glue. Um, but what I love about it is it is uh, gives you long work time, so that when you bond two things together, you have plenty of time to make adjustments, line them up better, um, and just you're not rushed or you're not stuck. It doesn't instantly stick like some other glues that I use. Um, it also works on so many materials like fabric paper, leather, it sticks leather really well. And I find that I use it for most things um, that require a good strong bond. So if you use glue, you want a glue eraser. And you've seen me glue things and I'm so exuberant with glue that I'm always cleaning up glue afterward. So this thing is, I feel essential. And you can get them at the dollar store, but I don't recommend those. Um, I have one somewhere and I really don't use it unless I can't find my good ones um, because it doesn't work as well. It, it makes you rub harder to get the glue off and it begins to mar the paper, which is this one, which I got at a craft store or an art store, I'm not sure which. Um, this one works much better. It just, you can erase glue, dried glue very easily and you're not gonna mess up your project. So, glue and eraser. All right, let's talk rounded corners. This is my favorite corner rounder and it comes in three sizes. So you've got a large, medium, do it in a different color so I can show you the difference, and then a small. Oh, mine wasn't, I didn't put it in right. There we go. All right, so there's the different sizes of each corner. So you can see these are great for notebooks, this might be great for cards, and these are great. I use the smallest one typically for my um, covered paper clips. I've also used the medium and I've used the large, but I prefer this. So this also works great if you're trying to round corners like this label, because I can take this. Oops. I think, oh, everything's just falling into view here. Um, I can take this label, and some of these I've already cut out some of them, but I can then just come here, I'll just cut out two of these. And you can use medium or small. For this, I'm gonna use small. Just stick it in, ah, go in. And yeah, it'll probably punch it back out. But you can hold it, it's long enough to do it. Now, what if your label wasn't long enough to hold? Let's try it. Now this one, I'm gonna just cut this in half and we use the back side. So you do still want pretty square corners. And let's see, in here, it's really too small to hold. So all you have to do, oh, come on, is get it in and let it, it'll self align to the corner and then it'll pop it back out. But you can see that you can get even tiny rounded corners. And I, I've done them smaller than this. In fact, here, I'll do it right now. Let me find some scissors. I'll try and cut this straight. There we go. So now I'm gonna stick this in. So now you can see I have two corners are already, are already rounded. And I'm going to let this fall in here and I didn't do the right side, hold it. There we go. And now I need to do this side again because I messed it up. Okay, so there you can see rounded tiny corners. And I find that useful for cutting out little labels like, like these. So you see, so you can cut them using that. So this is a great hole punch, I will make note of it so you can buy it. I don't have an Amazon affiliate thing going on, so it's just for your convenience. I will leave links. Hold on to that. So if we're punching corners, we might also be punching circles. So these are among my favorite circle punches, though not exclusively. So let's start with, the, not that one. 
So let's start with this one. So here you can see I can just very easily, since I've taken the bottom off of it, I can line it up on anything round and punch. Now, this has been happening with this one for me. It's been giving me this rough spot, like some somewhere in my cutting mechanism, it's got a little bit of a hiccup going on. But that doesn't mean it's no good, and let me show you why. Because all you have to do, I'll use this card we've been playing with, all you have to do is put some scrap behind it. Line it up again. It just doesn't like really thin papers. And this is copy paper that was vellumized. You can see, you can see through it. So there we go. A little bit thicker paper. No problem. And I get it a bonus um, second piece, but this could be anything, scrap. So just a little tip there. All right, so these guys, what do I do with these? Well, you see I make little circles with them, but I also use them to make windowed envelopes. And let me move that here. So this is an envelope um, from one of my kits and the, the white line is not there. Um, but if you wanted to add a window to it, you could simply draw a line. Now, I printed this with the white line so I could show you this. Um, basically, what I do if I want to use these to make a window with interior rounded corners is I simply cut, cut the middle out. And I didn't go all the way. Nope. Go all the way. There we go. And then it doesn't have to be neat, anything. Once I've done that, I can pick any size corner I want. This one's a little overkill. This one, definitely usable, but it might be small. So I'm going to go with this one. And all I'm going to do is come in here and pretend this is the center, this little marking right here. I'm going to aim that at the corner. Okay? And I'm going to line it up with the corner like so. I'm going to punch. I'm going to do that on all four corners. And I just like lining it up because it gives me sort of a, a reference. But it's a circle, so if you're mildly evenly close, you should be okay. Let me get rid of that. There we go. And again, I'm just going to sort of line it up with that area. And last one. Same thing. All right, so once you've done that, then it's just trim. So using a knife, I mean you can cut it. I'd never pull it off, but you want to put the um, your big, the knife point at the top of the arc or the the fattest part of the of this curve and then you're just going to connect the two see that you're going to do the same thing with all of them so you've got one two so these are lined up I'm just going to come here and do all of them I might as well finish it up so you can see it fully fully formed again I just Start there and there, connect the dots, so connect the circles. And this is going to give you a lovely, oh, that was a bad cut, a lovely straight window. There you go, so rounded corner. So here, you can see I was, I did not hit the right spot on that one. So because I am who I am, I'm gonna come back in I'm going to come back to my spot here and here, and I can see how I missed it. So I told you that was not a good cut. So this should be better. I'm just going to gently do this. And now we have a pretty lovely, perfect interior window. So you're seeing the little um, white corners because I used a thick white line. You wouldn't see that. Another trick is put your square on the back before you, you know, cut the envelope. Then you would never see any of it. So if that's what you would want to use, oops, if you were making interior rounded corners. 
All right, so what else do I love? These clips. I love these clips. So these dollar store, six of them, great. Go get some, buy two packs or dollar and a quarter, whatever they are. Clothes pins, I, I kind of overlook clothes pins a lot for their, uh, I don't know, meagerness, but they're actually really better in some cases because they hold paper, obviously. They hold paper, but they don't mar it. And some of these, especially these with metal, even rubber metal, and metal metal, which I also do like these clips, they're very handy. Um, but these could mar your paper and, and mess up your project. Paper clips won't do that. So basically, if you're sewing signatures or um, keeping other things together that you're gluing a spine or gluing a pad of paper or something, any of these clips will do. You need to decide how much pressure, how much clampage do you need? Do you need them to be this strong? Or could you do just paper, uh, clothesline, clothes clips, uh, clothes pins, whatever. The other thing, of course, is just use a piece of scrap paper in between your project and some of these stronger clips, and you should not have a problem. And if it is going through, use thicker, thicker cardstock here to protect it. But these, I find, I'm always looking for these while I'm doing various projects. All right, this guy. I love this grommeter. It's the easiest one to use. It was not inexpensive as a craft tool goes, but it was worth it. So save up those Joanna Michaels, 40, 50, 60% off any item. And if you don't already have one, I would grab one of these. It's so easy to use. You've seen me use it all the time. Um, and it's got some really great features, including this really deep neck um, to get into books, um, book it, uh, covers, which I do a lot. So I just wanna mention that. This, you need this ink. If you distress anything, if you age anything, this is my favorite collection of ink. I believe you can get these four colors as a set uh, for about the same price as this, which I think was about $15. Um, you can get them separate, which might be even better. I find it handy that they're all together so that they're always here and that when I'm deciding, well, how grungy do I want it to be? I've got two different browns and two different blacks. Um, so this is, I highly recommend having this this set of colors for aging um, your papers and projects. This tool, I never thought I would use this tool so much, but I do, and I use it for lots of things. For example, um, putting slots in things and tags, and I thought I had one here that had one. Of course I don't now, but I do somewhere have one that has the, the slot. Oh, here it is. So makes a great different sort of shape for a tag. And I'll show you a fun thing you can do with it. So when I mentioned I'd also be talking about tools I might improve if I could, this one sort of falls in that line. But let's see. So there's your first little cut. That's great. Looks just like this. We can stick a ribbon through it. Makes for a great tag. But if we just keep lining them up, we can create a slot. Oh, now I just got stuck in there we can create a slot. I don't know how to want to make that, do that. So now you can make a pocket that has a slot that's really, it's pretty, it's refined, it's perfect, um, that goes in here. So that's, again, this tool. Now the thing I would improve about this tool if I had the opportunity is I'd make this throat longer so I could get it deeper into a piece. This is it, you can't get any further into the paper than this. You can go, of course, closer to the edge, but I would like to go just a little further in. Still, for what it does, great little piece. I'll link to that on Amazon. All right, so then there's tweezers. I often use tweezers for lots of things. There are two kinds. There's regular pressure tweezers, and then there are reverse tweezers. And these are the kind I would say you should get because they just make life simpler. So let's say, let's say we want to put that, a ribbon in this slot. So yes, you could absolutely use these tweezers, but these, when you press on them, they open, they don't close. So then, and they hold the item, you don't even have to keep pressure on it anymore. And then you could just put it through and tie it. Okay, or staple it or glue it or whatever you're going to do. But these do make life simpler. So if you only can have one pair of tweezers, I'd go with these. This one came with my Cricut, um, but you can buy these separately. Tab punch. 
all the time. I use it frequently, and this I would certainly improve upon. So I hope whoever makes this, I don't know, um, hears this, please, in your next manufacturer, turn this around. Because I would prefer it, let me get a piece of paper here, I would prefer that I could do this with it. I would like to be able, if it were turned around, I could fold it in half and have the top sealed, have it um, continued, like this would be the top, and the fold would be the top, and then I could glue it onto any number of things in the correct um, position. You see what I'm saying? So this would be the fold and this would be the slot if in fact they just turned it around because the way you're expected to use it is you just punch out tabs and that's fine and then you can glue them together but wouldn't it be nicer if it punched out that way so that it was folded anyway I do use this a lot you can see here a few things I've done with them um, but I, I use them for all sorts of things and I, I'm sure you do too all right so now I have one more thing to show and this falls under the it's a great tool that I never use and it's the this happens to be a Tim Holtz stamping platform and when I first saw this sorry about the light reflection but when I first saw this I thought I need that I need to use that but the fact is I never use this so that's where I want to come in and say think about the tools that you're adding to your um, toolkit because some of them look really like wonderful when you see them like some of the things I've even shown you maybe you don't need reverse tweezers maybe you don't need a hole punch but everything is so seductive when you see somebody else using it so in this case I did get a uh, one of these and I've used it a couple times but I'm gonna turn it this way so I can open it up um, but I don't use it so for example the other day you might have seen me make these um, embossed white on white cards now here's a case where I could have used it because what I did was I simply put my my uh, stamps on the little stamping box and use them but I could have put them in here and simply I don't have an empty folder here, but I'm going to, I'll use this. You simply can put the stamps where you want. So here, I'll put that there. I'll put this one here. And see, there's my little one. You just put them where you want them as you're gonna stamp with them, however that is. And then just close them. Oh, and you can, Put the magnet down press so they stick and now they're in that spot now i didn't use them because i like to change things up a little so you can see this one goes this way with the little guy up here the little snowflake and this guy has little snowflake here but i didn't have to i mean i was sending them to different people nobody was going to know that they were each identical and if you're making a lot of something this would be the way to use it okay then you just put your next envelope in ink up your stamps stamp done oh look i missed a spot ink it again stamp it again so it has its uses but i rarely use it so i just thought i would mention that there are tools that you're going to think you absolutely have to have that maybe in reality don't and i think for me this is one this is one so i'm going i have vowed to try and use it more this year because i hate owning things i don't use and if i don't use this at least five times in the next six months i'm going to get rid of it because why is it sitting here but then you know what's going to happen the thing that i absolutely need it for is going to <laughs> present itself and i'm going to kick myself but so be it um, we can't keep everything so those are some things I think you can ask Santa for and um, or, you know, have put again in your stocking or uh, as a Hanukkah gift or any gift at all. Or you could gift it to yourself um, because I think they're things that will be useful, that last long and that have a lot of different um, applications for what we do. So that's all for now. Go create. Be awesome.